meeting. I will firstly introduce the councillors and officers at the meeting and for the benefit of those watching the live stream, can I ask everyone to acknowledge with a good evening. Uh, Councillor Abraham. Good evening. Councillor Mark Bainan. Good evening, Chair. Councillor Folder Hughes. Hello, good evening. Councillor Hilary Gander. Good evening, Chair. <coughs> Councillor Liz Green. Evening, all. Councillor Alison Holt. Good evening, Chair. Okay. Councillor Malcolm Self. Good evening. Councillor John Sweeney. Good evening, Chair. Councillor Diane White. Good evening. Councillor Yogan Yoganathan. Good evening, Chair. And we have our officers uh, here this evening as well. Alex Rosser Trockus from Planning. Good evening. And James Geach, our Surbiton Neighbourhood Manager. Uh, good evening, Chair. Yeah. And Martin Newton, our Democratic Services Officer. Good evening. And there'll be other officers providing support in the background this evening as well. Uh, before we commence the business of the meeting, there are a few reminders to make everyone aware of. Um, please can you ensure your mobile phones are switched off or in silent mode for the duration of the meeting. This meeting is live on the Council's YouTube channel and will be available after the meeting. Please keep your microphones on mute unless you are speaking and members can indicate they wish to speak via the meeting chat function. Please don't, do not use this chat function to ask questions of officers or councillors. Turning to the agenda, item one is public questions. I can confirm that no members of the public have notified Democratic Services of the intention to ask a question this evening. However, um, in a slight change to our agenda, um, our neighbourhood manager, James Geach, um, is going to give his neighbourhood manager's verbal update as we have no community grants on the agenda this evening. O over to you, James. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Just um, four brief points from me, if I may. Um, the first about Christmas decorations. Um, the festive lights agreed by the committee and its last meeting have now been installed and have been switched on for the first time this evening. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Gardinia for donating the tree which is installed and decorated by Community Brain in St George's Church on Yule Road um, earlier last week. Um, and the Community Brain also and a number of other volunteers for their help decorating Tolworth Broadway. Um, in terms of the community grants program, uh, so just a reminder that funding is still available for community groups as part of this year's program. And we have a number of applications due to come forward for the committee to co consider in January. Um, information about the available grants and an online application form um, are both available on the council website, which is kingston.gov.uk by searching community grants. Um, just a quick update from our rangers. Um, our rangers have noted um, an increase in fly tipping since the start of the pandemic. Um, residents can really help our teams by reporting fly tipping on our website. There's a new tool, it's an interactive map, which can, will let you know the fly tip has already been reported, and if not, um, how to report it. Um, you can find the map also by visiting our website and by searching fly tipping. Um, and my last point, Chair, um, Friends of Service and Station, um, we're very aware that a number of local residents are keen to support our local station, and that they'd like to meet others who share that mutual interest. Um, in order to help bring these people together, we'll be launching an online portal on the Council's website in the near future, which will allow residents to let us know if they'd like to help set up a new Friends of Surbiton Station group. Um, South Western Railway operates a station adoption programme, which gives local friends groups an opportunity to get involved with the local station and to work together to improve the stations um, and travelling experience for everyone. Uh, similar groups who have adopted stations elsewhere across the country have worked with South Western Railway to add planters, art display, and introduce programs such as a book swap scheme um, to help keep stations free of litter and also use the to create community space. Um, so more information on that will be available on kingston.gov.uk in the near future. And that's all for me tonight, Chair, but I'm happy to take any questions. Do members have any questions at this stage for James? then I take it then you're happy to receive that report this evening. Thank you, again, General Nods. Thank you very much. Um, the next item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies, Martin? Yes, apologies from Councillor Falchikov-Summer. 
Thank you very much, Martin. Um, moving on to item three, do members have Madam any... Chair, can I interrupt? Uh, there's yes. some, uh, some people on the phone, we don't know who they are. Can we, they be identified, please? Thank you. Uh, yes, um, my name's Ian Crane. I am the um, person speaking for uh, Grange Cottage application this evening. Hello, I'm Christine Jackson. I would like to speak about the proposed development at Surbiton Hill Garage. Thank you very much indeed. And there are no other, Martin, there are no other people on the call this evening who haven't declared themselves, have they? Uh, no, that's that's it, uh, Chair. I think everyone is in the meeting that needs to be here now. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And is it possible for the two joiners by phone to mute, or is that not possible? Sorry, could you say that again? I've missed that. Is it possible for the two people joining by telephone to mute um, their call? Martin, can that be done for the time being? I think it would help with transmission probably this evening for the time being. I'm, I'll see, Chairman. <clears throat> I think it might be easier just for the sound quality really that's that's right yeah thank you yeah. very much indeed okay. yeah thank you um so i think yogan you had your hand up was there something you wanted to say at this stage i think you were waving no okay uh so just moving on to item three um do members have any declarations of interest in in items on the agenda please indicate using the chat function now and i'll call you to speak I don't have anything at this stage. I take that as no. OK, thank you. Um, on item four, um, are there any objections to approving the minutes from the 12th of November meeting as accurate? Gen general nod. <laughs> thank you. I take that as agreed and I'll sign them at a later date. The next item is petitions. I have not received notification of any petitions for submission, so there will be no speaking on this item this evening. We now move on to the planning applications. The report is at Appendix A. The first application we have before us is for development at Grange Cottage, Southborough Road, Surbiton. The recommendation on this application is to permit the application subject to the conditions and informatives set out in the report. I will formally move that motion from the chair at this point so that it can be voted on at the conclusion of the committee's discussions. Is that motion seconded? Thank you. I see Councillor Abraham, you have your hand up. Thank you very much for that. Um, now, Alex, if you can present this item, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Could you just confirm that you're able to see the first presentation slide? Yes, I, I can, yeah. Thank you. Um, as you rightly said, we begin this evening with the first application for consideration, which is Grange Cottage, South Road, Surbiton, and that is for the demolition of the existing two-storey house and the erection of two part two three-storey detached houses with associated landscaping, refuse and cycle parking facilities. If I could begin by showing you some contextual photographs, you can see the site here where my cursor is. It shows the surrounding prevailing pattern of development, which is characteristically of large plots within large generous gardens. And here is a bird's eye view showing the property and its rear garden. Here we have the site location plan with the site boundary outlined in red. As you can see, the existing property is sited forward of the prevailing front building line. And here are some photographs. This is of the front elevation looking southwest and its main entrance. Here is a photograph of the rear. Um, as you can see, it's a part uh, brick part render construction with a number of pitched roofs at different levels and over the years has um, benefited from some contemporary additions such as this conservatory. 
Here's another view of the front and side elevation looking southwest with the entrance gate partially open. And here you can see the next door property, Cedar Lodge, where my cursor is looking southeast. Along Malcolm Drive, looking northeast. And further along that same road. And here is a view from the opposite direction, looking southwest, which shows the various residential architectural character and closer to the property. And here we have the existing site plan and the associated separation distances. As I said earlier, you can see that the front elevation of the existing property is very close to South Road, only 0.7 metres away. And here we have some existing floor plans with the ground floor. Um, and as you can see, there's an existing garage and store in the rear garden. The first floor with the bedroom and bathroom accommodation and up to the roof plan where you can see there are a number of pitched roof forms and also flat roof forms to the front. <clears throat> Here we have some existing elevations. As you can see, the maximum height of the existing dwelling is approximately 7.3 metres. This is the rear elevation. This is the elevation as you see from the street, although it is partially obscured by the brick boundary wall and each of the sides. And here we have a site constraints slide which shows on the left hand side the blue colour wash indicating the Southborough Conservation Area and to the rear of the property um, some of the nearby heritage assets such as 92 Ditton Road here which is a building of Townscape Merit, a locally listed building. To the right this plan shows the blanket tree preservation orders in a green wash and individual tree preservation orders denoted by the smaller green dots. The nearest tree preservation order relates to a tree on neighbouring property Cedar Lodge but would remain unaffected by this proposal. And here we have a summary of the proposed development. So one of the dwellings would be a three bedroom dwelling and the other a five. Apologies, there is a typo in, in that slide, um, both of which obviously are large family dwellings. We have two car parking spaces for each dwelling, a total of four. Um, there's ample room in the rear garden of each dwelling for cycle parking spaces and the details of those would be secured by a condition and characteristic of the area each of the rear gardens would be generous in size plot 100 square meters approximately and plot 290 square meters way in excess of our local standards for family dwellings and as you can see the density of the proposed development would fall under the density range indicated by the London plan. If I can begin now with the visuals of the proposed development, here we have a street scene of South Bar Road looking at the front elevation and you can see that the two proposed dwellings would be distinct from its neighbours due to its flat roof and angular formation. In terms of height, Whilst it would be higher than um, the property to the right hand side, you can see that it wouldn't be quite as high as Cedar Lodge to the left. The accommodation would be arranged over three floors. And here we have a proposed site plan, plot one and plot two, and the relative separation distances from the rear boundary. And here you can see the generous rear gardens and that a greater setback from South Bar Road would be achieved than existing. And if I move on to the proposed floor plans, here we have ground floor plans of both plots, first floor, 
plans with the bedroom and bathroom accommodation and the second floor here on the roof you can see the flat roof areas which would be um, finished in living room sorry living roof uh, natural species and here we have some further elevations this is the street elevation plot one on the left plot two on the right again with the maximum heights and from the rear here you can see the elevations from the side and the dotted line denotes the existing mass of the cottage in terms of materials um, the proposed development would largely comprise brick but does have large expanses of glazing some of which would be translucent it's clearly a contemporary design um, which would be distinct from its neighbours but is considered to be of superior quality and would both preserve and enhance the significance of the Southborough conservation area and if I go finally to the recommendation it's the officer's recommendation that planning permission should be granted subject to the conditions as set out in the office, officer's report agenda papers and update papers I should also draw uh, members attention to some late material that was provided today um, which shows some updated plans correcting minor drafting errors that include the insertion of a bathroom door on plot two and a correction of the site boundary. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alex, for that. Um, we've got one registered objector for this application, uh, David Twait. Uh, welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Um, can you now address the... Oh, there's a bit of echo. Oh, thank you. Um, can you please now address the committee with your comments and have plenty of minutes to speak? We will let you know when you have one minute remaining and when your time is up. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you and good evening. So this is a highly unusual planning application, I believe, for a conservation area, as it is proposed to demolish a late 19th century, we think around 1890 cottage, replace it with two ultra-modern buildings that are completely out of character with anything else in, in the conservation area, as we have heard. So I'm actually a neighbour to this application. I live in Nine Dunton Close, an immediate neighbour. And I've objected to this application along with many other local residents. We're fully aligned with the South Residents Association and with the Service and Conservation Area Advisory Committee who have also objected to this proposal. Our concerns, let me outline what our concerns are. We strongly believe these are actually material planning considerations and they're as follows. Firstly, the road safety of South Lane will be compromised. This, these properties aren't on Southborough Road, which is a wide road, they're on Southborough Lane, which is four metres wide only. And there is a, a vehicle barrier at the end of Southborough Lane. So vehicles have to go into, into, into the lane and, and, and out again. These properties, there is, uh, there is no, um, there's no turning and there's no parking other than the, the two spaces that have, been, that have been mentioned. So if those spaces are taken, which for a large five bedroom family house we assume they would be, Visitors and or deliveries uh, would not be able to park or turn round, and so they'll have to reverse out of the lane. And it's nearly 100 metres, we think, back to back to south the road. The lane is widely used by pedestrians and cyclists. There are no footpaths on it, and we're concerned about the safety of all users of this lane. Other, de other developments uh, on the lane did actually provide a wider area at the front, and this one has, to allow turning of uh, delivery and other vehicles. Secondly. The appearance and design of the proposed properties is inappropriate to their setting in Southbrook Conservation Area. They've been described as modern properties, um, they're three-storey flat roof structures as we've seen, and they're a mixture of brickwork and there's some plastic cladding on there. And so you, as we all know, Southbrook is, is, is largely traditional red brick houses in large blocks. Properties are also tall and narrow, again not in keeping with the surrounding areas. It's all very well saying the height is about the same as other buildings, but the top floor of these properties are rooms with large picture windows as opposed to pitched roofs. And that's what we were used to seeing in this area. We believe that these do not preserve or enhance the character of the conservation area. They're not at all characteristic of the con conservation area. And, and being sympathetic with the conservation area is part, I think, of all our policies uh, within Kingston and, and the, the relevant planning acts. Thirdly, the scale and dominance of the development is not consistent with Southborough. 
So I've seen the I've seen the numbers that have been been proposed, but these uh, in terms of Southborough, uh, a typical plot size is around fourteen hundred meters squared. Corcoran Road, and I, I, I compliment the committee here on striking having a good balance on Corcoran Road, was seven hundred meters squared per uh, per plot. These are um, two two nine one and three hundred eighty. So these plots are about half of everything else, and and the 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 six to seven hundred meters uh, plot size. I've got that in Nine Dunton Close, Manara Cottage has got that, and Cedar Lodge have got plots of that size. So these plots are significantly denser than anything else around them, and certainly significantly denser than anything that's been approved in South. They're also, um, they're also much closer to the existing and uh, neighbouring properties than the existing house. The existing house, where it approaches the other properties, is single storey. These are a three-storey uh, wall. So within one metre of my boundary fence on Nine Dunton Close, I shall have a three-metre wall. Which will actually overlook with, with picture windows an area that we sit in uh, which is which is which is our courtyard garden so it is certainly going to dominate us um and i think also squeezing two properties into this space is all very well talking about outstanding architectural merit these properties are squeezed in they look squeezed in and i, I don't believe they can be considered like that privacy is going to be an issue to us because of the height and having not just the roof at, at uh, the high level but also uh, windows at that level we're, we're felling mature trees um, there's two mature trees coming down. One minute. And I'm particularly concerned about the demolition of a historic building replaced with modern buildings and the precedence that sets in a conservation area. We understand that the existing property is in need of renovation, extension, modernization, and we would have no objection to this as we believe the right approach for this site, which would preserve and could even enhance the local area. We appreciate the pressure on, on the committee and everyone to develop more homes. The development, we believe, needs to be sympathetic to the locality. In general, planners, including this committee, have said they've struck a good balance between these requirements for Southborough. This is, however, is a very different planning application, which pushes the boundaries well beyond what has been approved in the past. It would set a number of unwelcome precedents, road safety, plot size, character buildings, demolition of an historic house being the main ones. We believe the proposal to squeeze two detached houses on this plot is motivated by the desire to extract as much value as possible from the plot without proper consideration for the appropriateness of the plans. Development should not be about maximizing financial return, and we believe the planning process is in place to provide the checks and balances the properties consider in oh, the local community, which I which I am giving you. Okay, and this this input I'm giving you is, is is agreed with, as I said, with the local committee. So we humbly request that this current planning application is rejected by the committee, and we'd be happy to provide input to any future revision of the plans to find a development scheme that could be acceptable to all parties. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Twade. Um, on behalf of the applicant, we will now hear from Ian Crane. Thank you very much. Welcome to the meeting. Please, can you now address the committee with your comments? You have five minutes to speak, and we will let you know when you have one minute remaining and when your time is up. Thank you. Do we have Mr. Crane here, Martin, this evening? Doesn't. Yeah, we do. Mr. Crane is in the meeting. Mr. Crane, can you come on? Uh, unmute yourself if you can. You seem to be having an issue with getting Mr. Crane to come on this evening. If you're here, Mr. Crane, can you unmute yourself so we can? So you can address the committee. Sorry, Chair. If, if he's um, one of the people on the phone, then I think we would have to unmute him. Is that right? So I think we, um, Martin, yeah, I think I think we muted them because they're on the phone. So we have to unmute them. I think if there's one of the two people on the phone. Can you sort that out for us, Martin? Please. I can't see a way to unmute someone else. That's the message I'm getting when I'm clicking on the icons. Um, if you can hear us, Mr. Crane, uh, may I suggest you leave the meeting and rejoin the meeting, please? So then we can probably hear you because I think it, then there's a technical issue here. So if you can hear me, if you can leave the meeting and rejoin. And we'll just wait for you to see if you can rejoin the meeting for one minute.
I'm just going to wait a few more minutes because I'm conscious that he may, Mr. Crane may well be having technical issues, but he hasn't notified our democratic services officer. Uh, so we're unaware at the moment whether he can hear me and we're not sure at the moment whether he's on this, on this call or not. So I'm just going to, if you bear with us, we're just going to wait for one more minute to see whether Mr. Crane can join us. And then I may, I may have to move on from that, from that point if he doesn't join the meeting in that time. But we'll give him one more minute. Thank you. Chair, I think Councillor Holt wants to speak. Please go ahead, um, Councillor Holt. There looks like there's two phone people here and look like one disappeared and then came back again. So is that not one of the ones? That, uh, is that not the person? Martin, are you able to? It looks like they've left, left a bit. <laughs> looks like they've left again and trying again. So it does look like they're trying to get entry. That, that was all. Yes, yeah, so I think Mr. Crane left and then rejoined. Um, but he looks as if he was still muted. I think, Martin, we're going to have to make a decision about timing here. How much time has elapsed? Can you hear me now, Chair? Hello? Yes, is that Mr. Crane? It is, yeah, apologies. I've been trying um, desperately to unmute myself. Um, but we're, right. we're here now, so that's good. Right. Apologies, thank you for bearing with me. So, Martin, if you could just advise on the timing, please. So we have, do we still have five minutes? Uh, yes, Chair, we, we have five minutes. Um, if Mr. Crane would like to commence his presentation now. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Chair. Crane. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and committee members. This scheme for two new homes, one of which is designed for our client to live in at Grange Cottage, is being presented this evening following the officer's recommendation to grant planning permission. As a local and award-winning architectural practice, the site and the brief represents an exciting opportunity to deliver an outstanding selection of family homes that will not only enhance and improve the immediate neighbourhood, but also provide an architectural asset to the wider borough. Over the course of two years, this scheme has been developed diligently in conjunction with numerous planning officers to be policy compliant. And whilst the process has been lengthy, it's firmly believed that the resultant scheme presented here this evening has benefited from this process to provide a high quality proposal. The officer's report that forms the agenda for this evening describes the rationale of the scheme, recognises the design approach and clearly sets out that the scheme is compliant with local, regional, and national planning policy. The existing house on the site was assessed at the outset of the design process. Unfortunately, it has suffered from a series of poorly considered mid 20th century additions and has not been sympathetic to the property. Furthermore, the current fabric of the house was found to be in very poor state of repair and upon review, refurbishment and or renovation is unviable. This generous plot is uniquely situated in a secluded passageway that links Southborough Road and Dunton Close. As a result, the proposed scheme of two units provides plot sizes that, while small, are commensurate in size with some of those found in the adjoining roads. The proposed buildings will be set well away from adjacent houses, allowing the proposed built form to be moved back some seven metres from the access lane to improve the overlooking distances of the houses opposite. Immediately adjacent to the site, there is a very broad mix of existing architectural styles that are not necessarily consistent with the wider conservation area. On this basis, the proposed new homes have been developed to have contemporary forms, a design approach that was positively encouraged by the planning officers. And it's noted that there are precedents for contemporary additions within the wider neighbourhood. 
The proposed buildings will be of an overall height and mass that is comparable with their neighbours' ridge heights and the proposed parapet heights, being lower than Cedar Lodge by 80 centimetres and within 30 centimetres of Nine Dunton Close. The scheme's materials are of brick with a good complementary translucent cladding that has been carefully selected to reflect the building's form with lighter materials proposed for the higher setback building elements to create a pleasing composition. The buildings will be detailed carefully and to a high standard, something that is absolutely essential to deliver a successful scheme. The client and design team have put sustainability centre and front of the design. There is an aspiration to adopt an approach similar to Passive House, combined with, but not limited to, the use of air source heat pumps, photovoltaics and high thermal performance. The landscape proposals have been developed to provide a substantial package that responds to the officer's comments and will protect the amenity of the surrounding houses. Whilst there is some tree removal, it is noted that the planting strategy will provide a net increase in trees across the site. The properties will have conventional front and rear gardens to protect neighbours overlooking and a detached layout allows for side access at all sides for services of bins and cycles. Car parking is set at two spaces per property and will be laid out in a new soft landscape front garden that will provide an improved aspect and surveillance onto the access lane. So in summary, the proposals have been developed to meet the necessary requirements set out in the local, regional and national planning policy. And we draw particular attention to the MPPF that states, planning policies and decisions should not attempt to impose Mom. architectural styles or particular tastes. They should not stifle innovation, originality or initiative through unsubstantiated requirements to conform with certain development forms or styles. So to conclude, our client is looking to realise a long held dream to build a highly sustainable and architecturally worthwhile house for their own occupation. And to this end, the scheme is a sensitive and responsive approach to provide much needed new family home for the current owners and will be full and deserving of the site setting. We trust we have been able to convey and capture the overall commitment that exists to successfully deliver this scheme and that based on the recommendation of the planning officers, members will be able to approve this application this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Crane. Um, we now come to members' questions. Um, do councillors have any questions for Mr Twait? There is a five minute period for this. Please indicate now. Um, Mr. Crane, could you unmute yourself if you can? Please, there's an echo. I am unmuted. Uh, Martin, uh, could you try and. We may have to go through that process again, Martin, if you can unmute Mr. Crane for the time being because of the echo. Uh, Jerry, I think you mean mute, not unmute. To, to mute, please. No, but I think the echo is coming from Mr. Twaits. Yes, Mr. Twait, over to you. Um, I was about to say, um, if you could, um, um, so if, if councillor, do you have any questions for Mr. Twait? We've got five minutes for this. Um, if you can just indicate if in the chat function if you'd like to ask any questions. Councillor Holt, over to you, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Tweet, for coming along and, and giving us a, a good understanding of some of the concerns you had. Um, I think for, for me, it was really just um, to do with the, the design. If, if it was a um, more traditional looking building, would, would you would you be feeling differently about the two properties? Um, yes, I mean, in, in some sort of order of, of, of what we'd like to see. I mean, obviously, we'd like to keep the existing historic house. It is, it's been, I mean, I've owned that house next door for 30 years, and that house has always been there. It has a beautiful garden. It is historic. I mean, it was in the garden of the Grange, which was actually built by Mr. Bentall. So, so it is very much part of the character of this area. And in fact, over the lane is Manara Cottage. The two cottages are very similar, uh, in, 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 certainly in age and aspect. Um, and and, and the, the, problems, the problems we have with, it, with what's proposed is one, that is ultra modern, two, that it moves the higher floors much, much closer to the plot boundaries. So the, the existing building has a, has a pitched roof, it's basically a two-storey building, and it is well away from the, the boundaries of the plot. 
what we have now is because there are two on there, they've been pushed to the plot boundaries. The, um, the, the, the gap between the, the, the whole three-story wall and my fence is one meter only. Whereas at the moment we've got the pitched roof and we've got we've got historic building there, and then we've looked out of out of our actually dining room window of that cottage for, for, for let's say thirty years now, and it is a lovely building, and it, to me it's a crying shame in a conservation area that we're actually pulling down a Victorian building. Now I, I I've heard the arguments about economic you know it's not economic to 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 restore the building, but it's still there for one hundred and twenty years and it can be restored. I think I think the issue is is the fact that we're more expensive. Not it's not economic, it's been more expensive. And I, and I think the issue for, for, for me is that certainly if I were to buy that building, um, I would actually want to redevelop and then take the best of what we've got now and conserve it. So, so I think putting those, those two properties, those two ultra modern properties in the middle of Southra is just inappropriate. And, 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 and I worry about all the precedents, precedents of knocking down a Victorian building, precedent of approving a plot size of, of 290 meters square in Southra. Um, and, and, and the presence of this, this modern architecture, when we have all, you have all, fought and fought to, to get uh, appropriate red brick architecture, Corcoran Road as a development, etc. You know, and I think you've established a good balance in that of modern buildings in a style which complements the area and of a size of plot which is appropriate to Southborough. And, and, and the, the plot um, around it, that cottage are, I've got 650 square meters, um, Cedar Lodge is about the same size, and Manara Cottage over the road is slightly larger. So to say it's, it's proportionate, it isn't proportionate to the properties around it. It is a lot more densely packed, those two buildings are more densely packed. And I understand uh, the, 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 um, the um, developers are taking one, and I believe the architect is taking the second property there. So, you know, I think, I think there's, um, you know, there's, there's going to be two large families in what is currently the space for a three three bedroom property, we I say we wouldn't we wouldn't object to redevelopment of the property. If we do need two properties, and I understand there's pressure on on building, if we have to go to that, and if we have to lose um, um, Grange Cottage, which I think would be a crying shame in conservation, but if we have to do that, then what we would propose is to put one semi-detached house in the middle of the plot. Now there are semi-detached houses, um, I, I'm familiar with some in Putney, which looked on the outside like a, a normal uh, modern detached house. But by, by clever manipulation of those, you can get two properties on there. that look in, would look in keeping with Southbrook, like one large house, but it's actually two. And they have one front door and one side door and, and things like this. I'm sure the architects are familiar with this. To me, that'd be much, much more appropriate than this modern box. This is gonna st stick out like a sore thumb. Now, whether you think that's good or bad, I guess, is, is probably a matter of taste, but it isn't Southborough. We've got traditional red brick houses in Southborough all the way through, and these will really, really stand out. And, and all the neighbours, I mean, I've, I've talked to all the neighbours, we all think they're going to be an eyesore sort to of us. Um, and, and we just, we just, you know, we live in Southborough, we live in a conservation area because we believe in the integrity of the area we live in. And this is, this is a real affront to us. I say both in terms of the scale of development and the style of development. And, and can, can I just finally say, um, to me, this, this whole planning process needs to be between the planners and the developers and the local community. And thank you so much for listening to me. I do appreciate that tonight. But this is the first time we've had the opportunity to, um, to really express our views, I think, at the, the planning department we've, we've rejected to, to the planning commission. But now, thank you for listening to this. Five minutes. You, you, you guys have been great on, in, in defending Southborough and giving us, I think, a, a new um, a new vision on what Southborough can and should be. Your five minutes is up. Thank I'm sorry. You. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm passionate about this. Thank you, Mr. Train. Thank you. Um, do councillors have any questions for Mr. Crane? Um, again, there's a five minute period. Uh, I didn't, uh, just before I go on to Mr. Crane, I didn't see any more names in the chat box, hence I, I thought that was my cue to move on. So uh, unless anybody's got any more questions for Mr. Twait, but I think that time's up anyway. So um, moving on, Mr. Crane, um, can you, um, if there are any questions for Mr. Crane, again, I haven't got any names in the chat box so on that basis, just waiting, we have one, uh, Councillor Self and uh, Councillor Gander. Uh, now, Mr. Crane, can you unmute yourself? Uh, Chair, 
Yeah. Councillor Sweeney has suggested in the chat that on a phone you press star six to unmute yourself. So I don't know if that would work for Mr. Yeah. Crane. If Mr. Mr. Crane, if you could try to unmute yourself by doing star six, then then I can go to the members who want to ask you the questions. Can you hear me, Chair? I can. Well, welcome back. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. We've got the... <laughs> um, so, Councillor Self, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much. Question on sustainability. You said in your uh, um, presentation you had aspirations to achieve near to passive house, which would, mm -hmm. if it got to passive house would be brilliant. Um, all I can see in the report, and this is, I'm just, uh, is is condition nine, which refers to at least a 19% reduction compared to 2013 part L, which is of course nowhere near passive house um, 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 energy efficiency. Uh, have you got, would you have any comment if, if, we, if we were to strengthen condition nine and i will be asking the officer the same question when i get that opportunity would you have any objection to that in terms of condition it to meet passive house standards no, no, I, I wouldn't go as far as that because you said you you've got an aspiration to achieve near to passive house the the three most recent applications we've had major applications to development control committee for example have achieved about 60 percent on the, on the residential units, about a 60, 60 percent reduction over part L emissions. So um, the condition might say 60 percent, should we say, and you might want to get better than that. But I think I, I, I wouldn't be, I don't think it would be reasonable to put a condition in to say you've got to achieve passive house, no. I think um, I wouldn't commit to a percentage figure here and now on the evening, um, councillor, but I think, um, and you're obviously knowledgeable on um, the requirements of Passive House, which is excellent. Um, I think if we were looking to um, get the gold plate of Passive House, then the architectural style would have been very much different again. I think there are limitations in terms of Passive House, which might not have been suited to this plot, but the client certainly wants to have a sustainable building, um, a fabric first approach with air tightness, which is to the sort of underpinning principles of Passive House. So I think probably in summary, we would welcome a, um, a condition that set a higher standard than that shown in the sustainability report with the um, application, but I wouldn't be able to commit to the percentage figure this evening. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to move on to Councillor Gander. Thank you for your question. Um, yes, good evening, Mr. Crane. Um, I wonder if you could, you mentioned that um, the local area had a, I think you said, a broad mix of architectural style. I'm just wondering um, what uh, you would be pointing to um, that, that would be in this, in this broad mix that you refer to. Um, thank you, Councillor. I think when you look at the, um, the qualities that are picked out in the conservation area as being um, particular to um, Southborough, um, it talks about um, large plots on wide roads, um, two to three storeys being the norm. Um, I haven't got the word in right in front of me, but I think what we recognise in our assessment of doing the walk around the conservation area is that when you come to this lane on uh, the offshoot from Southborough Road and in Dunton Close, um, the architectural style does change. It becomes um, something which is um, more recent, so probably of 1970s and 1980s provenance. And... Um, the style is very different from what you find on some of the grander roads like Langley Avenue and Ditton Road, where you've got big substantial plots. And these very much would have been the, the main houses within the conservation area. Um, I think Dunton Close at the time would have been an infield development behind such as what we're looking to achieve on Grange Cottage. Um, and indeed Cedar Lodge and Dunton Close on either side of our site are very different architectural styles. Um, albeit that they are of the time when they were built, 
And I think really this is what the proposals here in front of you look to achieve this evening is of a style that is appropriate for this time. Now, I think they have been developed to be overtly um, contemporary with um, planning officers um, direction and blessing. Um, but what we can say is that it will be of high architectural detail and well finished. Um, we don't have an aspiration to construct something which would be of a poor quality and in fact I think that is at the thread of everything we've done on this application and we want to do in the construction of these properties is to make sure they're absolutely of the highest standard because contemporary design needs and requires that to be successful. Thank you Martin. How, how, just give us an indication Martin of how much time we have left please. Uh, no we're over five minutes now Chair, just over. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Bainan, I know you wanted to ask a question. Um, can you can we add that in to your comments and questions later? Uh, yeah, well, I'll see if I yeah maybe I can you, know, you bring it up later. And it was similar to um, to Councillor Gander's question anyway, so that was useful. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, that concludes the. Um, our public participation on the application. The applicant and objectors may now leave the meeting and follow the rest of the proceedings on the YouTube stream. Um, I will now ask Alex to sweep up the issue so far. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to reiterate um, some points that I made in my presentation. Um, and those would be to emphasise to the members that the decision this evening has to be based on whether they think the proposed development would result in harm to the significance of the conservation area and whether they believe the proposed development may preserve or enhance the conservation area. Those are the tests, not whether in their opinion, the contemporary nature of the um, development is, is favourable or not. It's, it's important to note that a contemporary development in a heritage setting does not equal harm. There are a number of examples um, around the borough, but also in, in Surbiton neighbourhoods, such as the Glass House, that many will be familiar with, where we have a historic building and a unashamedly contemporary addition. Um, so I'd like to emphasise that in terms of character and appearance and harm to heritage assets. In terms of density, um, as my presentation set out, this proposed development would fall well below the identified density for the area, whilst it may be different to the immediately adjacent properties, there is a variety of plot sizes, plot widths and architectural styles in the conservation area. Um, in terms of privacy, um, the majority of habitable room windows on the development in both plots one and two will be on the front and rear elevations. Those windows in the side elevations will largely relate to non-habitable rooms and in the main be finished in obscure glazing. Um, and in terms of dominance, I think I covered in my presentation that the heights would be equitable with the neighbouring properties. Um, obviously, the roof forms are different. This is a contemporary development with flat roofs and the immediately adjacent properties have pitched roofs. However, the existing property has flat roofs in existence already. This is not an alien roof form either on the site or in the South of a conservation area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alex. Um, do councillors have any questions for Alex? Um, can you please indicate by using the chat function? Right, okay, uh, just going through. Um, so I have uh, Councillor Sweeney and Councillor Self, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, just a couple of things to clarify, um, if, if possible, um, following the objectors' comments. Um, I haven't heard, firstly, about road safety being, was, it, was, it was mentioned that this was not safe in terms of road safety. Cause, so could you 
talk me through your thinking on that. And also, um, I did note the concerns about privacy. Um, and, and you've just remarked things largely relate um, to non-habitable rooms. But, um, you know, I'd like to know which ones um, are non-habitable rooms and how that's going to impact the privacy. They're either privacy is not going to be impacted or it, or it is. So I'd probably like to some more detail on that, please. OK, in terms of privacy, um, non-habitable rooms tend to be bathrooms or rooms that aren't um, living spaces, if you like. Um, those windows that are on the side elevations of the plots in closest proximity to the adjacent properties would largely be non-habitable rooms and obscured. And we do have a condition to secure that to ensure the uh, privacy of neighbouring properties. In terms of road safety, um, there is an existing vehicular entrance and exit on South Lane. Um, to ensure safety in that regard, we have, again, conditioned um, details for visibility displays to ensure that both pedestrians and vehicles using that lane would be insured. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alex. Um, and now, uh, Councillor Self. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a question for Alex on sustainability and energy use. We, we heard the applicant say that they've got an aspiration to achieve near to passive house, which is obviously welcomed. Condition 19 says evidence to demonstrate a 19% reduction compared to 2013 part hour. I suggest that there should be an extra word added to that at the very least, which should be evidence to demonstrate at least a 19% reduction, because this actually says to demonstrate a 19% reduction as if that's what we're aiming for. And I think it should say at least a 19%. That, I suppose, is a comment, but I'm combine, going to combine this with a question, which is, you heard the question I asked the applicant. A any condition we put in, I know it has to be has to has to be necessary and it has to be reasonable. I do not consider it reasonable to put a condition in to say you've got to reach passive health standards, even that might be an aspiration. But could is would it be reasonable? And I don't I, do, I really don't know the answer to this to change the nineteen percent to and I to say at least sixty percent or we often we we do get developments now that do achieve 60 percent reduction so would that be reasonable and could we do that or and i know that the policy refers to 19 percent. so do we have to refer back to policy or can we go further than that thank you thank you chair um you're correct in in your latest statement councillor self in as much as it's a policy requirement to ensure a 19 percent reduction we couldn't insist on anything greater for a minor development such as this. However, we could um, strengthen the condition by saying at least, as, as you suggested initially. I think that um, would be reasonable. It would meet the six tests um, and it would be enforceable. But anything greater than that, we wouldn't have a policy basis for. Thank you, um, Alex. Um, Councillor Gander, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, Alex, I was wondering about um, preserving and enhancing the um, conservation area, but also about the amenity of uh, the adjacent property. We heard from the objector uh, who spoke about the, the height of the building um, closest to him. And it struck me that when we saw the diagram where you've drawn the outline of the existing house, um, the, there is a great bulk which is at the top level, um, which is quite unusual um, development, if you like. We, we get used to, don't we, uh, seeing a, a pitch roof and that that doesn't really encroach on, on your your view, if you like. You know, it's... it's, it's um, similar to the houses next door, next door, etc. But this this bulk, um, I was wondering if you had any comments on on that in terms of enhancing the conservation area or um, uh, its impact on the immunity of the neighbour. 
Thank you, Chair. In terms of its impact on amenity, clearly it would change the context for the neighbouring properties, but a change in context, in officers' opinion, wouldn't result in harm. Um, no unacceptable levels of overlooking or loss of privacy have been identified because of the positioning and sighting of the habitable room windows, which, as I said, are in the front and rear of, of the plots predominantly. Um, as I said, it would result in a, a change in context, but that does not result in harm. Thank you, Alex. Um, and in relation to the, um, specifically to the conservation area, in, in how it changes the context? It would consider to both preserve and enhance the significance of the conservation area because it is a high quality design. Um, if I refer back to my earlier comments, which emphasise the fact that it is unashamedly contemporary, it does have flat roofs, whilst the immediately adjacent properties have pitched roofs, but that does not mean it is harmful by definition. Um, the significance of the conservation area dates back to Victorian properties, but um, as I said earlier, there is a great variety of architectural styles within the Southborough conservation area. So it's not just the immediate properties we're looking at in a contextual um, frame. It is those as well as the wider Southborough conservation area, which does have a variety of roof forms, architectural styles and materials. Thank you. Um, I've, there are no further names in the chat box at this stage. So, um, I, oh, uh, Councillor Bain. Sorry, thank you, Jag. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah, just uh, kind of following on, on that point, really. I mean, so a conservation area kind of implies to me that, you know, they're, they're, they're protecting what was there already, but you're saying it's not necessarily the case. Obviously, there's, there's a certain dominant style there and a type of property, but that a new, it's obviously, yeah, I mean, the objector is very firm about his opinion about the um, about this new property and how it differs to everything else that's around there. But you're saying that's not necessarily that in itself is not a consideration, material consideration. It's whether we think that that has a negative impact, and it doesn't matter that it's different in style necessarily. It's whether we think that that if that new design or that new property is going to have a negative impact, rather than it being yeah, obviously not necessarily in keeping what's gone before. Thank you, Chair. Absolutely. Um, if uh, that stance were to be taken, no development would ever occur in a conservation area. Um, to preserve and enhance doesn't mean to preserve in aspic. We, um, we have to identify harm and we have to support development that we consider is sensitive to its environment, but that doesn't mean to replicate. Um, it means that we should through contextual analysis, identify the high quality elements um, and architectural features of that area and, and decide on that basis. So contemporary design does not equate to harm. And that, that is the test that, that members should be um, trying to juggle with. Thank you, Alex. Um... I don't see any more names in the chat box, so um, I'm going to now move on to the committee's comments and debate on the item. Um, do any members um, of the committee have any comments on this application? Please, can you indicate now by using the chat function? Any comments? I don't see anyone. Ah, oh, here we are. Councillor Green. I was kind of hoping others might um, end up being in before me uh, for their comments. Um, I, I think the buildings themselves, um, I know it's not about the design, I actually think it's a fantastic design. I think it's in the wrong place. It, it's quite an art deco look to it. Uh, I live in Berryland. We've got quite a few wonderful art deco buildings and I think they've you know, the two buildings proposed would actually fit really well within the Berylands environment. Um, do I think that 
the look of them will cause harm and it's a very difficult one. I, I do think they cause harm to the conservation area um, because I think that in Southborough, I'm not worried about the plot size, I'm not worried about the road safety, I should say. I think in Southborough that predominant style within that locality is very strong. And to lose that style throughout, um, potentially, would, would cause issues. Um, you mentioned the glass house by St Andrew's Church as modern uh, versus um, historic. It's actually one of my all-time favourite uh, buildings, but it's very, very subordinate to the main church building, which is a huge church, and the glass house is a small room um, off to one side. So whilst it is extremely modern, and I, I think it works really, really well, I think there is a difference between that, that if they tried to replicate the style, that would actually look out of place. So by going ultra modern, they, it, it worked. I actually think they could design a style as we've got, we gave planning permission a couple of years ago, something like that, for a couple of other buildings down the same patch. Walked down there yesterday and, you know, okay, they look newer because they're newer bricks, but in another five, 10 years time, they'll look the same. I actually think if the building can't be repaired economically, something like that, um, creating two houses if, if need be, um, would work really well on that site. I just, uh, I do think this causes harm, but I'm probably not wording it very well. So I'm hoping somebody else will come in. Um, but it's not because I dislike the buildings, it's just the location of them. That would be my view. Thank you. Um, over to you, um, Councillor Self. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I concur with what. Councillor Green has just said, so I won't repeat, repeat all that she said, but I will. I am going to go a little bit further. Um, I listened carefully to both to the objector and the applicant. Uh, the objector spoke of uh, highways issues. I, I'm afraid I don't agree there. I think there would be no reason to refuse this application on highways grounds or highway safety. I think the 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 issue and really the only issue that i've got to do i would accept the mass the scale and basically everything else about the development or the proposal but it is the design so this comes down to design and design is mentioned in the mppf as being very key and very important um I would go further in that I think that there is significant harm. This would cause significant harm to the characteristics of the conservation area. Why? I'm looking at this is the conservation area um, assessment 2009. It, it was brought in, I think, in the conservation area started in 78, but it's been revised since then. So this is a fairly recent study. And this is on architectural character. Um, there is a mix in individual architectural design. That's what I, 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 so I agree with that. And that's what the study says. There is a mix in architectural design, but design has been primarily influenced by the Victorian Gothic moving towards the aesthetic, Queen Anne and arts and craft movement by the late 19th century. The architecture was more decorative and hark back to a more rural way of life. Common features include, and I'm going to read them out, there's, there's a few, but they, they don't take long. Asymmetry, accentuated gables, prominent and decorative chimney stacks, exposed brick and beams to explain construction, woodwork framing and porches, painted woodwork, tiling, painted rough cast render, pebble dash. Now, this is not me, this is not my assessment, this is an assessment that's uh, um, that's been through the, pr the process, as it were. So I, I really, like Liz, I, I actually really do like, I think these are really good buildings and I would like, and I would, I think, quite happily live in one, but they are out of context. They're, they're in the wrong place. 
um, that there, if I was in Sweden, I think I'd love these. And I, if I was in Sweden, I'd come back. I'd expect them to meet passive house standards. But that's that's going off at a slight tangent. I, so it's not a case. I'm not saying oh these buildings they're ugly, they're awful, they're bad design per se. But they do not fit the characteristics of the conservation area. And if we ignore the conservation area and its characteristics, then if we just ignore that and say, well, that doesn't matter, then I'd say, well, let's not bother with conservation areas because why have we got conservation areas otherwise? So I would I would argue that this, this causes <coughs> significant harm to the characteristics of the conservation area. As a direct consequence of that, tilted balance disengages. So I would argue that tilted balance is disengaged because of the significant harm that this causes to the conservation area, the heritage assets, in other words. Um, if tilted balance is disengaged, that puts a that brings our scales much more. In, I'm afraid it takes a lot of weight off in favour of a, a, um, approving this application and brings the scales back to the um, refusing, which is where I'm sort of moving towards. Um, um, yeah, th thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, and now. Uh, Councillor Gander, your comments, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I I think the proportion of um, proportions of house to garden, etc., the fact that it's set back um, all works pretty well in that particular lane. Um, I find the design exciting. Um, and, and I think many of us on the committee uh, don't really like the pastiche, um, you know, attempts at uh, copying that that um, sometimes are put forward. Um, but I I think Liz saying it's in the wrong place sums it up for me. Um, this it Malcolm used the word design. I was going to say style of the property, and for me, it's having the the kind of this massive building higher up. In your line of sight, um, you know, with the that ordinary houses around it is just too stark a contrast, um, and would cause harm to the conservation area. I think it might well be something that I would go out of my way to walk past because I would want to have a look at it, um, but it wouldn't be uh, something that I would necessarily want to live next to if I had chosen to live in a conservation area. Um, so I I wouldn't be voting for this application. Thank you, Councillor Gander. Um, are any other members wishing to make any further comments? I haven't seen any names in the chat box at this stage. Okay, uh, Councillor Holt. Um, so um, I think I probably, um, again, don't want to repeat too much, but um, for, for me, I, I think um, I do agree that I do quite like the style. I do like the fact, um, you know, that it's, uh, you know, that it's, I don't dislike the modern style of it. Um, and I'm, and I'm listening to what the officers have said about, you know, whether it detracts or, or, or not um, from from the conservation area and that we can't be certain, stuck in time. So I, and I had and I did, you know, it's an area we, I do know it's in my ward and I, I did look and um, go there um, today and I've done done various times before and I was thinking about the, the location. Um, and because it's high quality and they've given a lot of thought to it, that's why I'm actually finding this really difficult because I, I, I think it is an, a nice design. They've thought about things um, and and I can understand why, um, you know, that uh, the other side of that is that, um, you know, it's, it's too modern and it's not in keeping. Um, I know there was local residents were, you know, perhaps were not so happy about your previous applications that were actually in keeping because of, of, of you know, some, some of the considerations that we've been looking at this evening. So I am definitely um, struggling with this um, and it is really over whether I think it's causing, causing harm um, if it is a high quality 
um, building that we're looking at. And I'm trying to sort of think of other areas, conservation areas, where you might actually have some quite modern things and um, quite contemporary things. But then there's obviously in the South Korea, there were some things that were probably more contemporary for their time and weren't quite as uh, in, in keeping um, and, and are, are there as well. So so things contemporary obviously does move on. So I'm I'm definitely um, uh, struggling with this one at, at the moment. Um, and so so that's just that's my comment, as obviously, and I'll, I'll leave it to that. Thank you, Councillor Holt. Um, are there any other comments at this stage? I think that's all comments for the time being. Um, I think um, now what I'd like to do, Alex, is is, is um, um, there may be as as, as really as, as a result of the of the discussion, there may be some um, proposed conditions that we have discussed. Um, um, during the course of this this discussion, and um, can you, if you can, um, word for us any potential conditions that um, and articulate really what members have been wanting to say. First of all, at this stage, um, if I could just ask you to come back on that. Thank you, Chair. The only condition I recall. Um, having suggested amendments to was the sustainability um, condition um, which we agreed would be reasonable to strengthen and add the wording at least so any proposed development would achieve at least a 19 percent reduction um, I don't recall any proposed amendments to others yeah I think I probably concur with that. I didn't. I didn't hear any other conditions being being discussed. Um, so, if members um, are minded, um, I think if we can now move um, to the vote on the condition. Um, that was the nineteen percent. I think it was at least. I believe. Um, but if 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 we're minded to go on to the vote now on the condition. Um, there were yeah. other comments made, but um, I think yeah. Councillor South wants to well, just mention. Along. The, the, the amendment I've changed is very small. and We heard what the applicant said, and it, it, it's simply to say to achieve at least 19% reduct, CO2 reduction compared to 2013 Part L instead of achieve that. Uh, it, could, could we not, could, could, it's up to you, it's not for me. Could you not just, uh, I, I imagine everybody would be in agreement with that. It's a very minor change. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Um, so um, I think, Alex, if if on that basis, then um, what I'd like to do then is maybe uh, move on. If we can factor that in through the condition, we don't need to go to a vote on it. So I think that's what I'm hearing is we don't need to go to a vote on it. So um, I think what I'm suggesting we do now is actually go for a vote to the substantive motion for this application. So if members are all happy to go forward on that basis. Um, so, um, Martin, if uh, if I hand over to you for this phase. Thanks, Chair. So the, the vote before uh, the, co the uh, committee is to approve um, the development for Grange Cottage, subject to the conditions set out in the officer's report, and with that amendment to condition 19. So I'll call members individually, and if you could say for, against, or abstaining. Um, Councillor Abraham? Abstain. Councillor Bainan? For. Councillor Folder Hughes? Uh, against. Councillor Gander? Against. Councillor Green? Against. Councillor Holt? Against. Councillor Sharper? Against. Councillor Self? Against. Councillor Sweeney? Against. Councillor White? Against. Councillor Yoganathan? Again. Okay. 
Okay, um, so that motion is lost um, by one vote to nine with one abstention. So could you just clarify um, from what you've just, what, what that actually means, just for just for people listening in, have we, have we refused this application? Yes, so the, the motion was to refuse permission and, and that vote has been lost by nine votes to one and with one abstention. Thank you, Martin. Um, at this stage, um, I'd like to then really go back to um, Alex, really, because we're looking at really to look at proposed wording um, of this refusal. Um, I just wanted to perhaps just sum up a few of my own um, thoughts is that there have been uh, this evening comments made about significant harm um, and really not, not in keeping with the character of Southborough. Um, Councillor Self mentioned about tilted balance is disengaged. Um, also about the bulk of the uh, uh, top floor of the um, of the uh, in terms of design, um, picking up on that. Um, but it's really about um, being really in the wrong place. So really to articulate what that would mean in terms of um, in terms of its design, really, and 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 the the significant the factor of significant harm. Thank you, Chair. Um, my understanding is now that members have to agree on reasons for refusal. Um, I'm happy to assist in, in the formulation of wording for that reason or reasons for refusal. Um, my interpretation is that we only have one reason for refusal at the moment um, and we can confirm the wording of that outside of this meeting, but it would be along the lines of by reason of its contemporary design and appearance, the proposed development is considered to be out of context and would cause less than substantial harm to the significance of the South for conservation area that would not be outweighed by any public benefit in conflict with national, regional and local policy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alex. Um, I think that concludes that item. <laughs> Um, so, uh, oh, I have a shake of the head. Chair, oh, I, I need to take a vote on that. Oh, I do apologise. So now we do go <laughs> and, to uh, the Chair, may Sorry, I propose I need it, that? Uh, proposed and seconded it before we take a vote. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've got comments I'd like to make as well. I've been putting my name in the chat function. Um, yes, please, uh, Councillor Self. Thank you. Liz was before me, but it's... it's... Oh, I do apologise. Uh, yeah, Councillor Green. Sorry, Chair, I was just going to say that um, I'd be very happy to propose uh, the refusal of the permission on the basis uh, that Alex has just laid out with her wording. OK, thank you very much. And um, Councillor Self. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to question the, re the, the wording of the reason. Um, it is it, it, the suggestion we got in front of us is that by the design because of its contemporary nature would be contrary to the characteristics of the conservation area i'm, I'm I've, i didn't write down all that you said alex so i'm not i'm not mind have it word for word and would cause less than significant harm i'm suggesting that it would cause significant harm and therefore tilted balance should be disengaged um because I, I that is that would be my argument do we need to say that now if this went to so what i'm going to ask you a question alex if this went to appeal we need you as officers to represent the council at appeal and you need something to hang your hat off for, from the reasons that were given tonight so if we just went with the reason that you're giving that you've suggested that that wording if it went to appeal could you at that appeal bring in the fact that tilted balance should be disengaged because of the harm to a heritage asset in this case the conservation area thank you chair um i think it's important to make the distinction between um significant and the levels of harm um in the terminology of national policy we have to use 
and whether we need to specify um, that the tilted balance is disengaged. If we identify harm, which I believe members have done, we don't need to mention that the tilted balance has been disengaged but what we do need to do is agree on the level of harm we feel the proposed development would result in. Less than substantial does not mean insignificant. Um, to say substantial harm is an incredibly high bar to achieve in heritage terms and, and normally means total loss of the significance of the entire heritage asset which in this context would mean the loss of the significance of the entire Southborough conservation area. I don't think that would be justified in this case um, and to say less than substantial harm in my opinion would be strong enough not only to articulate um, the harm that members feel the proposed development would have but would be strong enough to defend at a subsequent appeal if that were necessary. Can I just come back on that Chair? Yes you can. Mm. Thank you, thank you Chair. So can you, I've got that Alex and I agree with what you say about th this absolutely would not destroy all the characteristics of the whole of the, uh, the conservation area quite clearly. So your wording less than substantial I'm sure in planning terms I'm quite I, I, you're a professional, I'm not, so I'm, I'm perfectly happy to accept that. If this went to appeal, if we, with that less than substantial harm, would an officer or anybody, would, a, would someone appeal defending the uh, decision be able to argue that tilted balance is disengaged because of that? In theory, and I, I'm not saying they would win that argument or whatever, that would obviously can't, can't. Can't, but, but but would that argument be able still to be put forward? Yes, yes. Just because it's not explicit in the reason for refusal, it doesn't mean that that argument wouldn't apply. Because if harm is identified and it significantly and demonstrably outweighs the benefits of the scheme, which again is what I feel the members are um, proposing, then we don't need to be explicit within the reason for refusal. It's good enough to say and to identify that the harm is less than substantial and that it would not be outweighed by any public benefit. Okay. So um, may I just, I've got two, I've got um, Councillor Gander and Councillor Sweeney, but I just wanted to come back to say, Alex, do you want to amend that wording now or can we go after this meeting to look at, um, at really getting the wording absolutely as a, as a, uh, to articulate what members have just said, um, are you going? Do you want to reiterate that wording again? Um, we we have the ability um, under the constitution to convert as uh, confirm the wording of that condition outside of this meeting. But I'm confident that we have the um, the structure and the um, the purpose of the condition. Sorry, the reason for refusal um, well enough. Okay, um, just pending that, um, because obviously I've got I've got um, uh, Councillor Gander and Councillor Sweeney who'd like to just come in. Um, I think Councillor Gander, I'm, I apologise. I think I missed you earlier before Councillor Self um, came in. So do you want to come in now, and then Councillor Sweeney afterwards? Yes, I, I mean I think that the tape will show the way that the, the vote went etc but I, I do believe that our democratic services officer martin um said it the opposite way around that the motion was to approve the the the, the, uh, the proposal was to approve and that, that that was overturned i think you actually said it the other way around um so just really for the record unless i misheard i mean my, my yeah i mean martin if you could come in just to confirm because my understanding was that we had we had um, sort of had the discussion amongst members about the um, that condition that we placed. So we didn't actually vote on that, but we went straight into the substantive vote. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the vote was on the substantive motion. Members having approved the uh, minor addition to condition 19 or amendment to condition 19. Um, so it was, it was, of course, a motion to 
approved permission. It was before the committee, and it was one vote for, nine against, and one abstention. So um, just so I can, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so um, at this stage, um, there are no further votes that will take place for this application. Is that correct? No, we, we, we need to take a vote on the refusal motion. Fine. OK, so um, if uh, I have Councillor Green in the chat box, did you want to make uh, a comment? No, just to say that I have um, proposed a motion to refuse this. I believe I need a seconder uh, and then we can go to the vote on that, is, is oh, what I understand we are, Chair. Yeah, so if I could, if I could have a seconder. I'm happy to second that, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Self. So, Martin, if you could conduct the vote, please. Thank you, Chair. So the motion now before the committee is to refuse permission for the Grange Cottage development on the grounds um, that were indicated by the planning officer. If I call you individually and if you can say if you are, are for uh, that reason for refusal, against or abstaining. Councillor Abraham? For. Councillor Bainman? Abstain. Councillor Foley Hughes? Four. Councillor Gander? Four. Councillor Green? Four. Councillor Holt? Four. Councillor Sharper? Four. Councillor Self? Four. Councillor Sweeney? Four. Councillor White? Four. Councillor Yoganathan? Four. <coughs> That's 10 in favour, one abstention. So the motion to refuse planning permission is carried. Thank you, Martin. Um, we now come on to the second planning I, uh, application, which is for development at Serpenton Hill Garage, the Avenue Serpenton. The recommendation um, on this application is to permit the application subject to the conditions and informative set out in the report. I will formally move that motion from the chair at this point so that it can be voted on at the conclusion of the committee's discussions. Is that motion seconded? Thank you, Councillor Holt. <laughs> um, so, um, Alex, if you can um, present this item now, thank you. Councillor, if you wouldn't mind confirming when you're able to view the slides, thank you. Yeah, if you can put the slides on now, thank you. Can't see anything yet. Apologies, Chair. I'm having some technical issues with my Wi-Fi. If you could just give me one minute. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Chair, are you able to see the visuals? Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Um, the second application for consideration this evening is reference number 20 slash 01611. It is in regards to Surbiton Hill Garage, the Avenue, Surbiton, and it relates to the demolition of the existing garage and petrol filling station and the erection of a new four-storey building above basement comprising nine self-contained apartments with associated car parking and landscaping. If I begin with some site context photographs, we have an aerial view here of the application site. As you can see, the ground has been cleared within the site boundary. Here's a bird's eye view of the site where my cursor is here. 
Here we have a site location plan. The red line denotes the site boundary. Um, and as you can see, the exist, sorry, the pre-existing garage building there. Here we have a view of the front elevation. Hoarding has been uh, erected along the boundary since the closure of the petrol station. And here is a view southeastwards towards number 15 Avenue South. Looking north towards 63 the Avenue and you can see the site would be behind the hoarding here. Here we have a block plan showing the general form and pattern of development in the area. And apologies, this is quite a faint existing floor plan, um, but it does show the existing canopy as it was when it was a operating petrol station. Again, you can see the very basic flat roof structure of the canopy as was. And here is a summary of the proposed development. Um, the mix would involve three, three beds, two two beds and four one bed flats, a policy compliant mix of family sized dwellings. The upper floor would have access to a private balcony. All other eight properties would have access to the communal amenity space to the rear which would be in excess of the policy requirements um, in terms of car parking six off-street car parking spaces would be provided including a disabled space and we have in excess of the policy requirement number of cycle parking spaces this is a proposed block plan of the flatted development as you can see, the front building line would be set further back than the existing garage and slightly forward of neighbouring properties, number 63 to the north and 15 to the south, but broadly similar. Here we have a proposed site and ground floor plan. You can see the car parking spaces to the front of the development on either side of the entrance. Here would be the communal amenity space to the rear, plus the landscaping and introduction of plants and shrubs as screening. Here we have the light wells that would form the main light source to the basement flats at the rear. And again, we have light wells serving the front elevation and the habitable rooms to the front. And here we have the basement floor plan to go back a step where flats one and two would be situated. And then we have roughly two flats on each floor. This would be flat five and six on the first, seven and eight on the second and flat nine on the third, which has the private balconies, as you can see, to the front elevation and a flat roof form. This would be a proposed visual of the front elevation. You can see the maximum height would be just shy of 12 metres. However, that upper floor would be set back from the main front elevation. The predominant features of the development would be the projecting bays oversailing the ground floor level. However, the basement flats would be protected by this balcony, sorry, railing structure at ground floor level. Here is a visual of the proposed rear elevation and the sides and here is a street scene elevation as you can see it is roughly in keeping with the height of neighboring properties despite the more contemporary design approach and here more helpfully is a color computer generated image of the front elevation 
as you can see it would be a flat access to the main entrance and you can see the car parking provision on either side of that entrance and lastly the recommendation is that planning permission should be granted subject to the conditions as set out in the officer's report agenda papers and update papers it's important in this case to um, emphasize to members that this is a revision of a recent planning permission um, that was granted back in 2019 the only difference between that and this is the addition of a further floor of a flat roof form and the addition of a three bedroom dwelling which would bring the number of family sized dwellings up to a policy compliant level thank you chair thank you alex um we have one registered objector for this application christine jackson welcome to the meeting please can you now address the committee with your comments you have five minutes to speak and we'll let you know when you have one minute remaining and when your time is up thank you If you could unmute yourself, uh, Miss Jackson, if you can. I think it was star six, I believe, <laughs> from one of our helpful counsellors. If you do star six, that should hopefully unmute your phone. Just give Miss Jackson a few, a few seconds to unmute her phone. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Miss Jackson? Yes, we can hear you now. So if you could start, you have, I don't know if you heard uh, before, but you've got five minutes to speak and we'll let you know when you've got one minute remaining, when your time is up, when your time is up. Thank you. Madam Chair, we can't hear her. Oh, I I can hear her, so I'm surprised you can't hear her. What, you can't hear her at all? No, uh, I, I have the same problem, Chair, sorry. Oh, Martin, could you, um, could we reset? Because the members did not hear what the what the objector, yep. Ms. Jackson, was saying. <clears throat> okay. Um, can we just do a quick test to check whether everyone can hear? Uh, Ms. Jackson, could you just um, we just need to double check that all members can hear you? For some reason, they couldn't hear you. So we do apologise. Um, are you still online? Can you hear me? I think we may have had a loss of connection. Can all members hear me? I can hear both you and I can also hear Christine Jackson quite clearly, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Miss Jackson might might be off the call because I can't see that she's connected any any longer. Um, Martin, could you just do a little check for us just to see? Martin? Yeah, um, I, I can see she is still showing in the meeting, but I don't think she can hear us. Um, are you able to contact uh, Ms. Jackson to see if she can log off, log off and, and log back in again? I, I mean, I can hear, if I can come in, Chair, I can hear yeah. Christine Jackson very clearly, and she can obviously hear me, I think. So what's being suggested, suggesting, suggested, Christine, is that you log out of the meeting and then log back in, and hopefully that will you. I'm not sure Ms. Ms. Jackson's actually able to <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're chatting uh because i can't hear anything my end so it's a complete it's a complete communication breakdown at the moment so we're, we're working on it as, as the famous last words um if you Martin, just, i don't know if you if you can you converse with, with um, miss jackson 
Chair, if you just for a minute, I can hear Christine, but I can't converse with her because all we can hear, if you keep talking, we can't converse. Christine, are you able to um, leave the meeting and then rejoin? I'm afraid, I'm afraid, um, Councillor Self, that we lost connection with her a little while ago because I can't hear her either. So, uh, Martin, are you able to try and get hold of Miss Jackson to see if she can log I back will, in? I will see if I can do that, Chair. Yeah. Okay, let's just hold fire for a second. A few technical glitches this evening on the telephone lines. Councillor Self, can you can you hear Miss Jackson? Okay. Yeah, I, I have just spoken to her chair, and she's left, and she's now going to try and come back in. Okay. Christine, can you hear me now? I can. Oh, good evening. Can all members hear Christine? Thumb, but give me a double thumbs up. <laughs> right. I think we may have got over some technical gremlins in the system this evening. So um, shall we just start afresh? So um, you have your five minutes. So please do begin. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Christine Jackson. I live at 82 Manor Drive with my husband, Nigel Jackson. We have lived at this address for over 40 years and have brought up our family in this house and garden. My neighbor, Yvonne Clover Lambert, lives at number 84 Manor Drive and shares the concerns which I am about to bring to your attention. She too has lived at this address for a lengthy period of time. Both 84 and 82 Manor Drive will be affected by the proposed building on the site of Surbiton Hill Garage. It is not the building of a multi-occupied building which concerns us, but the height to which it is proposed to build. Our gardens are already overlooked by the existing buildings in the avenue due to the extensions into the roof areas. There has been a lack of consultation and cohesion as to the style to which this has been done in the past. So the residents of Manor Drive are forced to look at the add-on blocks, which now mushroom off the roofs of several properties in the Avenue and Avenue South. These roof extensions have large picture windows, which enable occupants to peer into our gardens and look into our bedroom areas, giving no concern to the fact that we have lived in Manor Drive for a very long time. The whole character of the residential area has changed due to the design of these extensions, 
and the increase in the residential population. At times, residents in these multi-occupied buildings comment on our activities in our gardens. We are subjected to this, plus their playing of loud music, which emanates from the over-large window areas. We have tried to maintain our privacy by growing high fur hedges, but there is a limit to which this can be done due to safety and the restriction of light in our garden. There is the ever increasing issue of noise with so many occupants in each house. The garden areas become extremely noisy with many children shrieking, noisy exchanges from the occupants enjoying parties and barbecues. Not all the occupants respect the garden boundaries and on occasions, those living in the rented multi-occupied dwellings climb the fence divisions to retrieve children's toys and their pets, namely dogs. Due to the high occupancy of these multi-occupied dwellings, vehicles are parked nose to tail along the avenue and avenue south, causing difficulty for local traffic to pass each other. At times, these roads look like a workshop with mechanics repairing bodywork and engines. This is unacceptable in a residential area. The area which Surbiton Hill Garage occupied will be deemed a brown fill site due to the fuel which has been stored below ground. Is it a healthy or environmentally friendly site on which to build a residential dwelling? The ground may be contaminated due to fuel leakage. Will this be made evident to prospective residents renting or purchasing accommodation on the Surbiton Hill Garage site? Finally, this proposed roof extension, height of building, pays no heed to the length of occupancy of existing residents in Manor Drive. Surely we have a right to ask for the concentration of dwelling areas to be kept to a minimum, maintaining the health and character of the area. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Um... On behalf of the applicant, we will now hear from Eamon Prenter. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting, Ms. Prenter. Um, please, can you now address the committee with your comments? You've got five minutes and we'll let you know when you've got one minute remaining and when your time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first thing, can you hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Well, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good start. Um, Chairman of the committee, uh, elected members, uh, officers, thank you for the opportunity to comment uh, on this application in support of it and in, to be able to respond to the comments from uh, Ms. Jackson. Uh, first things first, um, as has been pointed out, the scheme before you is effectively for a single additional floor and a single additional apartment. The provision of this single additional family sized apartment that deals facilitates compliance with policy DM13 which requires that 33% of all units in apartment developments are three bedroomed. The previously permitted scheme of eight units under 19 slash 02646 full provided only 25% three bedroom units. The comments made by uh, this objector uh, a few minutes ago um, really reiterates the comments that she made in her original objection, other than I suppose um, quite a number of comments and concerns about what I'll call the existing situation there in the locality rather than the actual proposal itself. Um, I don't believe that the people who will be occupying this development will be uh, uh, any less law-abiding uh, or generate any more noise or uh, issues than uh, the vast majority of people in the area. As far as the previous concerns expressed by the subjector, I just want to make a few comments. Um, this four-storey building is not out of character with the area. It's 40 centimetres taller than that granted previously under 1902646 FUL. That's effectively, or just put in some context, the length of a school ruler. The proposed additional floor is set back, marginally visible, as you will have seen from the visuals presented, and is lower than the height of number 15, the Avenue South. Secondly, the site is not within a conservation area. And I'm very glad to say that, that in light of 
discussions on the previous item. Thirdly, the proposed four-storey building is not much taller than the other structures in the avenue as alleged. It is slightly taller than 63, the avenue to the north, and slightly lower than number 15, the avenue to the south. It, it is acceptably, in our view, nestles between the heights of these two existing buildings when viewed from the avenue. In fact, the additional floor proposed when viewed from street level will be hardly visible. Fourth concern from this objector is concern of apartments built into roof spaces. Um, it is true that apartments have been built into roof spaces. In this particular instance, um, the officer has acknowledged a mix of heights, finishes and architectural styles. And in this particular case, we're providing family-sized accommodation, uh, which is much needed in the borough, in a very desirable location. Uh, and setback, unlike the other examples in the area that the objector has referred to. The fifth point is very simple. Um, there's a concern uh, in previously stated objection from this objector that the occupants of the third level or the second floor will look into the bedrooms of the houses on Manor Drive. That's that's not the case. Um, and also I would point out that this development in the first, first level, second level and third level above basement, this has all been decided. What's before you now is the additional floor, not what's on the third level and the level of intrusion, which, as I've said earlier, um, is not a, in, intrusive. Sixth point, uh, there is a comment from this objector about rear gardens and the need to have to have grown uh, large trees on, on boundaries. These are all outside the uh, application site. They're beyond the control of the applicant. And in my view, they're actually planning, uh, planning considerations in this case. Seventh point raised by this objector is that the apartments are very small, unsafe, limited access provided, and parking is inadequate. That's not the case. Um, in this case, there is no the the, the 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 apartments, including the uh, subject apartment on the top floor, is within the necessary standards. It's fully compliant with building regs and accessibility standards. And the last point is there is no parking issue here. We're in the parking standards. And in conclusion, in the absence of any uh, substantive concern or any substantive damage set against the benefits of the scheme we believe that there's no sufficient reason to overturn what is a very firm recommendation from the planning officer to grant planning permission in this instance thank you thank you mr prenter um thank you we now come to members questions um do councillors have any questions for miss jackson there's a five minute period for this so please indicate now in the in the chat function if you'd like to raise any questions to Ms. Jackson. Just checking to see if anyone wants to ask the objector, Ms. Jackson, any question. I don't see any names in the in the um, chat function. Um, so do councillors have any questions for Mr. Prenter? Okay, we've got uh, Councillor Green. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask about cycle parking. Has the number of spaces that you're providing increased as you've added the extra flat uh, proposal? Um, and I, I know from the officer that you are currently slightly above, but only one above. Uh, and I wondered whether there was any opportunity to add further cycle parking if this was permitted. It is a very easy cycle to a lot of places um, and obviously we would be wanting to encourage uh, cycling. So I couldn't actually see where the cycle parking was, to be honest, on the plans because they're a bit hard to see on your computer. But where is it and has it increased and would you increase it further? Well, if I can answer the question, first of all, we are with we are to standard for parking, parking cycle parking. Um, look, if, if, if there was an opportunity to provide more car cycle spaces, I'm sure that's not an issue. I'm sure that's not an issue. Okay, thank you. Um, any more questions for Mr. Prenter? I can't see any names in the chat box at the moment. Just wait, waiting for one more second. Um, thank you. I think that, uh, that concludes our public participation. Sorry, Sorry Chair. Oh. If nobody else wants to ask one, I'll come in with another one, yes, uh, which is to do with electric parking points and whether any of those would be um, electric, any of the six ready for electric charging points. I can't remember what the terminology is now, uh, but where it's 
enabled but not switched on if you see what i mean on is there any electric charging points let's put the question a bit simpler yes i think i think i think i think there is actually yes um i think there is yes the, the officer can clear up the exact details later thank you mr brenta yes. thank you oh and uh, councillor gander Yes, I, th I think that, that the term Councillor Green was looking for was passive. We'll, we'll talk to um, the officer about that. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions for Mr. Prenter before our time is up? <laughs> I can't see any names in the chat box. So thank you, Mr. Prenter. Um, so if you would like to, um, you may leave the meeting and follow the rest of the proceedings on the YouTube stream. So thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. And um, we now come to the committee's comments and debate on the item. Um, do any members ha of the committee have any comments on this application? Please, can you indicate in the chat function? Councillor Self? Oh, Councillor Self, um, sorry, if you could unmute yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Self, over to you. Oh, sorry, I, well, I, sorry, I, for, I thought I'd had a module. I do apologise. Um, we normally go to questions of the officer first, but, uh, oh. but I, I've got a comment and I'm quite happy to go straight in with my comment. It's not a question, it's a comment. Are you happy with that, Chair? Yes, that's fine, thank you. Right. Um, this is a comment, not a question, as I say. This is just a comment. Um, I'm concentrating mostly on the third floor because the extent position, the extent, the, the extent permissions already effectively um, means we would have very little reason to, what should we say, refuse the the, the development up to the top floor um policy dm13 is says incorporate a mix of unit sizes and types and provide a minimum of 30 percent of dwellings as three bed or more um this this application site does do, does deliver that it delivers 33 percent as three bed um i would comment it's a comment that i'm i'm, I'm up in the top floor now I would suggest that the design is highly contrived in order to achieve three bedrooms. Um, mm. Highly contrived. I would Agreed. But, mm. I, but I think the the objector needs to leave the meeting chair. But um, I'll continue. Um, um, it, sorry, could I just ask, Mr. Prenter, if you could if you could follow this meeting on the live stream, please? And the objector. It's and quite the yes, please. I, I, I did. I just assumed that that was the case. But you've, if you could, if you could um, follow these proceedings on the, if you could leave the meeting and follow the proceedings on the live stream, please, for both Maybe the objector Martin. and the applicant. Maybe Martin could help with that if necessary. Yes, please, Martin, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Um, yeah, please, please do continue. Uh, I've lost my thread. Minimum of three bed, and this thirty percent should be three bed. I was saying that the the design, the interior design, which I don't all, I, I well, I generally look at, but I wouldn't normally pay pay this much attention to. I think it's highly contrived to achieve three 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 three. Uh, sorry, to achieve three bedrooms in the top floor. Agreed. Yes, it does, and I assume the officer will be able to con confirm that the minimum space standard um, are met. In which case um, um apologies um apologies councillor self martin could i'm i'm miss jackson please please could you leave the meeting please as instructed please self can continue thank you apologies thank you, yeah. Sorry, it is difficult when it is difficult to follow a thread um I was talking about, I think I was talking about the highly contrived design of the top floor, which does give three bed 
three three it does give three bedrooms and maybe the officer afterwards could just quickly confirm that the minimum space standards are met if they are it is policy compliant i should say that dm 13 does say on sites particularly suited to larger family housing this minimum figure should be exceeded i i would argue that or i could argue easily that this is in berylands it is full of family housing in berylands and is in an area that could easily support um family more than 30 percent family dwellings you've got alexandra um, park a about a two minute walk away with a with a rather good playground for children you've got the tennis courts and the play area etc so it's not as if this is an out of the way um, location um uh so so I, 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 but it, it, it is necessarily, it is nevertheless policy compliant. So I don't think there's much, I can't come up with a reason to refuse this. Um, I think it does, the, um, the, the design is such that it does fit in with the area that the whole of the avenue is well, virtually the whole of the avenue is flats, some conversion flats, some new blocks like the one immediately opposite I think the design of this one is superior to the block immediately opposite. One can argue about the design of other blocks along the street, but they are quite varied. So I, I quite like the design of this one, actually, um, but the look of it from outside. So um, I would go. I would say that we should add a. I, I, I can't see. I was just going through the list of conditions. I don't think. And the officer could confirm this. We've got an issue. Liz Ray, Ray asked a question on ev charging points i think we should put in a condition that there should be 100 percent of ev charging points on the six parking spaces 20 percent of that 20 percent should be live 80 percent should be passive 20 percent of six is that's a tricky one isn't it um sorry uh whatever it is i don't know what it is one one parking space at least should be active the others should be passive and I would, I would, I can even move that we go to a vote. But others, it looks like I do want to speak, so I'll, I'll leave it to that chair. Apologies, I don't know. If, um, uh, purely from a script point of view, um, I realised that um, I hadn't given Alex the opportunity to sweep up any of the issues. But um, seeming that there've been so many technical issues this evening. If you're happy just to press on and then Alex, I come back to you afterwards. Um, so I think Councillor Gander, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a, a question. I'd just like a little bit more from Alex, if we can, on um, how the contamination of the site is dealt with. It was something that the, the objector talked about and it was something that I was curious about. I know there's some stuff in the papers, but I'd just like to a little bit more about that um, and also I have a question around um, this extra floor which of course is basically what we're talking about on this application um, has balconies and I was just wondering what the nature of those was because the objector talked about um, the overlooking and I was wondering what the nature of the the balcony fence or wall was, was and whether or not that would differ from adjacent properties um, but just really to see uh, about that element as far as the houses on Manor Drive were concerned. Um, if you like Chair I can just make a couple of comments uh, to so that I don't have to come back again later. Mm. Um, I, I also like the design and I think this is a good example of a, a modern design which nonetheless um, does fit in with the, the prevailing style and I would point to the, the bricks um, and also the fact that it has bays that project like most of the, the properties along there and the ones that don't look out of place at the moment and, and the, the, the roof being set back is, is a lot better than some of the mansard uh, roofs that are already on the, the, the the, on the street and, and therefore it actually is an, is an improvement um, so it's a modern style and improving 
and it's it's got some features that that phone in. Uh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you. And now, uh, just before I go to Councillor Green, I'm going to make a request again. Please, Ms. Jackson, can you leave the meeting and follow us on the live stream, please? Because I can see that you have rejoined the meeting. So I'm asking you again, please, can you uh, leave the meeting so we can continue with the meeting? Uh, with the members comments and uh, you will need to leave the meeting and you can follow us on the live stream. Um, if I can, Martin, if I can leave you to uh, uh, manage that process, please. Thank you. So I'd like to go to Councillor Green, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I find this sort of rather odd considering the last one where I really liked the buildings, but they were in the wrong place. I don't actually like this building very much, but it's in such a mixed place that, frankly, there's no reason to refuse it on the fact that I personally don't particularly like the look of it. Uh, it's not the worst I've ever seen, uh, but it's certainly not the best. Um, I've mentioned the cycle, and I agree with Councillor Self, if, if Alex can pick it up at the end, that um, a percentage, which is not 20%, but one or two of the bays should be active uh, and the rest passive. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gander. Um, so that we can have electric charging points in there. Uh, I don't know if it's possible as an informative, if not a condition, because it won't be policy compliant to be a condition because they already meet it on cycle standards, but whether we can have an informative that secure cycle parking would be really, really welcomed um, on the site because I can see that being used a great deal. Um, but overall, my comment would be that we should, that we will need to permit this. I don't think the extra floor adds any disadvantages um, that I can see. So um, yeah, that's my comments on the application. Thank you, Councillor Green. Um, Councillor Bainan, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just really um, a question, really going back to what uh, the objectives were saying. I mean, I think from yeah, listening to her, her main object objections were around kind of privacy, the sort of the noise, etc., from the development, and um, you know potentially antisocial aspect of you know having more people crowded into a smaller space, um, and you know they're just kind of making the situation worse. I mean, I don't know if that's something. So just because no one else has brought it up, I mean, what, how much could we take that into account, or if at all, um, in planning decisions? And what can we do if we are concerned about that in terms of maybe putting conditions down um, to manage the impact of, yeah, kind of um, potentially, yeah, more more people living in a confined space. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, at this stage, um, I can't see any more names in the chat box. Alex, I'd like to turn to you because I think obviously you hadn't swept up the issues first of all. So let's do that. But also just to look at some um, of the uh, of the comments, really, if you can articulate what members have been saying in terms of conditions and informatives, please. Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of the issue of contamination, um, officers are cognizant of the previous use um, and are securing the uh, health and safety of future occupants through three very stringent health and safety conditions. Um, if you turn to conditions seven, eight and nine, um, we ask for technical studies on the subject of contamination to ensure that there, there would not be any unacceptable adverse impact. Um, in terms of cycle parking, um, details would be secured via condition 16. However, there is adequate space in the rear garden to maximise that capacity. Um, whilst we couldn't, uh, through a condition, request any more than the standards which the applicant has already met, we could certainly encourage the applicant to maximise cycle parking provision on site. As I said, there is ample space in the rear garden to do so. Um, in terms of electrical vehicle charging points. Um, one EVC has been secured via condition number 13. Um, unfortunately, we wouldn't have the 
policy basis to require further EVCs. But again, we could, through an informative, encourage the applicant to maximise the number on site. Unfortunately, we can only request one in five um, and, and the applicant has met that standard. Um, in terms of adverse impact on neighbouring amenity, um, we don't feel that the addition of uh, an additional floor would result in a significant adverse impact. Um, if the members turn to the, the floor plans, the balconies are actually facing the front elevation, looking out onto the avenue and not the rear gardens of neighbouring properties. Um, the windows in the side elevations of the ground first and second floors are all obscured, so wouldn't have any opportunity to overlook to either side. Um, and in terms of the comment about residential occupation, officers believe that this application um, has already established the residential use on site through the previous permission. Um, not only that, it's for a residential use in a wholly residential area and wouldn't create any noise or disturbance above and beyond uh, the existing uses in the vicinity. So we wouldn't have any grounds to restrict the applicant in that regard. Um, if I've missed any points, councillors, please do um, interject. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, I just got, um, actually, I've just got, is it Councillor Green you wanted to ask a question on charging points? Yes, you, you mentioned, Alex, that uh, it meets the policy standard of one in five. There are six points there, six bays. Uh, if it needs to be one for every five, surely for six it's got to have two. Uh, and then, and I'm aware this is uh, being broadcast, but um, I would say if we were to change that condition to say two, do we really think the applicant, and give permission, do we really think the applicant would go to appeal on that condition so that he had to only give one instead of two? So I'd like to propose that that condition is changed to provide two electric charging points. Thank you, Chair. Um, my, my reading of London Plan Policy 6.13 is that we can only ensure that one in five spaces provides an electrical vehicle charging point. Um, we'd have to have 10 total spaces to provide two EVCs. So I think it's perfectly reasonable to encourage the applicant to provide more, but I don't think we have a firm or reasonable policy basis to ask for any more. And on the point that, were well, they really going to go to appeal if we put two in? Because I, I would, I, I've not got the exact wording and I appreciate you're an expert in this, not me, but if it's one in five, it should start again in my mind um, with number six. I'm not going to die in a ditch over it and I don't want to prolong the meeting, but um, it just seems to me we could get away with it. Thank you, Chair. Um, whilst the likelihood of the applicant um, appealing on this ground may be um, low risk. We have tests which we have to abide by when we're applying conditions and I don't think it would meet those tests, unfortunately. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Councillor Self. It's just, just that on, on that, that's why I said 20%. That's where I got my 20% from. It is that it's, it's just I know that's the standard. That's the policy, if you like, is 20 percent, which in this case works out at one point two spaces. And we would normally I say we at DCC, we would take that as one space. So if it works out at five point six spaces, we would still say five spaces, I think. But this is one point two. So I think I can't see we could. I would stick to if and if we, we can put in a condition that says 100% must be EV charging points 100% just that 20% i.e. one in this case rounded down to one would be active and five would be passive. Alex could you come back on that? Alex sorry could you come back on that point? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I would have to go back and refer to the standards as to how many maximum passive points we could enforce, but they've certainly met the um, active uh, requirements. So if, if you're happy to allow me to confirm that requirement outside of this meeting, we, we could do that. What, what would members be minded on that point? I'd be happy to take that to off offline to discuss. So, could you, so looking at really looking at wording, Alex, of the con, of conditions, um, can you just confirm? Because I'm just picking up on points made about an informative to secure cycle parking was mentioned earlier, and also the uh, or maximise cycle provision on site. We're going to take offline the discussion about the EV charging point, but we, we have one EV charging point. Um, can you just confirm that that is I'm just articulating as much as I can members' comments? But I think, um, can you just come back to us on that? Thank you, Chair. Um, I can confirm that the only supplementary um, informatives members are suggesting relate to maximising cycle parking provision on site and maximising um, electric vehicle charging points on site. Okay, would that be, um, we are trying to sort of making sure that we articulate what, what we've discussed. I'm, I'm taking that maybe just to ask a general consensus that, that you'd be happy with that wording um, and we can take offline off the meeting, but I'd be happy with that going forward on that basis. Um, so, um, what I'd like to do now then is, um, I'm. I think at this stage, do we need do we need to vote on these conditions, or we're going to do that now? We're we happy to go to the substantive motion straight. So, um, I I think therefore um, I'm going to ask Martin to manage the vote, please. Thank you, Chair. So the um, vote before the committee is that planning permission be granted for the Serbian Hill Garage application, subject to the conditions set out in the report and the additions of the informatives um, on cycle parking and electric charging, which we've just been speaking about. So I will call members' names in order, and if you can say whether you're for, against, or abstaining on the motion to grant planning permission. Councillor Abraham? Four. Councillor Bainan? Four. Councillor Folder Hughes? Four. Councillor Gander? Four. Councillor Green? Four. Councillor Holt? Four. Councillor Sharper? Four. Councillor Self? Four. Councillor Sweeney. Four. Councillor White. Four. Councillor Yoganathan. Four. So the plan of permission is granted for the Southern Hill Garage application by eleven votes to nil. Thank you, Martin. Um, so as the previous item, as the item seven was moved to the beginning of the meeting, which was the neighbourhood chairs report, um, I'm now moved to the final item, item eight, which is the work programme. Um, I'm just going to um, uh, ask if there are any questions or comments on the work programme at the moment, as it stands. I can't see any, I have shaking heads, I can't see any one. So um, is that report received? get a general consensus. Thank you very much indeed. So there are no um, urgent items or exempt business. So I close the meeting at uh, 48 minutes.